Uh, we ready to go? Yep. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Public Art Advisory Committee meeting of May 12th, 2022. Uh, we'll take roll call um, and just answer here. Uh, Tom Harriman. Here. Emily Layton. Here. Uh, Philip Mejas. Uh, he's not here yet. Okay. Uh, and then we'll go to Winifred for staff. Present. Uh, Mel Melvin Willis is not present as our council liaison. And so let's see. All right. So we'll just move right on into our agenda. Well, we also have we're gonna we're gonna have some visitors today, so we have uh, Brian Bland and Kyle Lamb are gonna uh, jo join us later for some comments about our projects, some of our projects. Can I add something to the agenda? Yeah, for uh, sure. Point? Sure. Um, I just uh, or just put it under discussion when we get there. Okay, and what is it that goes under discussion? Uh, I just wanted to talk about. Um, well, how we're going to move forward without a chairperson and rack and um, yeah, that's yeah. That, that's, I mean, I know you're, we're going to have the discussion about possibly combining the meetings, so it could be part of that. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? All right. So our first item is to approve the meeting agenda. So can I get a motion to um, approve the agenda with that uh, addition? I motion okay. to approve. All right. Second. Second. Tom, all in favor? Aye. Raise your hands. The only people who did. All right. <laughs> Unanimous. <laughs> It'll be a fast meeting. Good. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Then the action item number three, uh, uh, actually it's action item number two, but our third item on our agenda is to prove our um, meeting minutes from April 14. Did folks have a chance to review them? Yes, no, no. Okay. So I just have uh, um, one comment and that is that we just um, uh, spell freeze correctly. So we have it misspelled twice. Um, it's spelled correctly in one place, but then it's spelled wrong in a couple other places. And that's F-R-I-E-Z-E? -E. Yes. Okay. And other than that, they look fine to me. Um, so can I get a motion to approve the minutes uh, with those corrections? So move. A second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. All right. So moving right along here. Um, do we have any public comments? Um, no, we do not. Okay. No public comments. Uh, and then we'll just move right into item five, which is information presentations. Uh, Brian Bland is going to give us an, uh, an update on our art inventory project. Can we bring Brian on? Uh, I think he might already be here, actually. All right, there he is. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Phil would want to hear this. Uh, <laughs> I yes. don't know where he is, but we're okay. moving right along. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, go uh, ahead, Brian. Good evening, uh, commissioners. My name is Brian Bland. Uh, I work for KCRT Television, and I am currently uh, your photographer assigned to capture images of the public art and uh, put them on the city of Richmond's um, image repository. Uh, I do know Winifred has been asking uh, uh, for status reports on this project. Uh, we have been trying to uh, capture images that are on the inventory um, as it may, but we are a staff of uh, three people total uh, where we used to be nine. Uh, but as of right now, I am the sole photographer capturing the images for the inventory. Uh, I did get a chance to go out today uh, and capture images at nine other sites. Uh, those images need to be processed and uploaded to the inventory. Uh, I am trying to uh, get with Sue Harpin, who is the IT director, my boss, uh, and see if we cannot just schedule a weekend to where we can go and complete the rest of the inventory. I do know that the arts is part of uh, uh, 
uh, Sue's passion. Uh, she really wants uh, to keep the business of the photography in-house. Um, and that pretty much is where it stands at this particular point. Uh, I do have it on my schedule to go out again next week and uh, cover some more of the public art. And again, like I said, I really would just like to schedule a complete day where we can just get uh, all the uh, public art done. As it stands right now, uh, we are, there's 168 total uh, public art pieces on the inventory right now. Uh, I do know that 69 are done, not including the ones that I shot today, leaving roughly about a uh, hundred or so uh, left uh, on the inventory itself. And that concludes my report. Is there a way you could do a screen share and show us how how to how the inventory looks, or not really? I don't have access to it right now, but I did update the inventory to show all the ones, all the um, the art installations that have been uploaded to the city's repository. Okay, everyone has had access to that document in the past, and we'll uh, circle back around and give them an update, but mainly when it's finished, you know, because it's hard to look at incomplete. Right, you know, and then I also try to print off sections to go out and, you know, cover the images and it doesn't print too friendly. Yeah, it's a lot of information, it's right, a lot of information. Right. but thank you very much, Brian, for that update. So that kind of <laughs> answers the questions about uh, trying to hire a different photographer. It's a kind of an in-house thing that uh, for a variety of security reasons, variety of reasons. So we're making slow progress, but sure progress. Does anyone have a question for Brian? Because I think- um, I guess I'm curious about that. I, I know in the, we, we will have some time before it's completed, but if you could just share a sampling of some of the images, perhaps you could just email a couple. It would be nice to see how they're turning out. Okay. And I think we have ideas about how we might want to utilize this in addition to the inventory. So it would be, Kind of just nice to see a couple of them. Um, I know Tom has a, a couple ideas about how we might be able to create some more interest in the arts in Richmond and um, use these for different graphic projects or maps and things like that. Um, so it'd be great to just see, see some of the in-process work. And I know the inventory is hard to read right now, but eventually we want to get it to a place where it is user-friendly. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what I can say uh, in regards to some of the images, uh, uh, some of the sites that I went to today, uh, I noticed that there were cars in front of some of the murals or the weeds were overgrown or something like that. Uh, there was a dumpster in the way of uh, one of the murals. Um, and then we also, too, try to deploy our drone to capture some of the really big murals. That way you get a holistic view uh, of the mural. And, a good example is the one that's on top of the uh, recreation center, uh, the Guadalupe one, and uh, we are going to retake that one with the drone specifically, just so that we can have a better angle of it and make it look nicer. That's that's really great to hear. I think I know that we weren't expecting really beautiful, perfect images of all of the art. That just isn't reasonable. But we would definitely want to like start to down select at a certain point and figure out um, which images we do want to feature and how we can then capitalize on those so that you're not spending all your energy trying to find days when dumpsters aren't located in front of art. Or right, asking like people to please move their cars or something like that, you know. Well, I think that's a perfect timing for Kyle uh, to go to the next step, which is to show some examples of how we've been mapping the inventory. So the first step is to get it in the system. And then from there, it goes into the next step, which is what Kyle's going to share with us. Uh, Kyle, are you uh, there? Yes. Thank okay, you, great. and Brian. Um, my name is Kyle. Um, I am a city manager intern, and I've just been helping out with Winifred with the art inventory projects. I'll be sharing my screen right now. So are you able to see my screen, everyone? Yep. Yeah, so previously we just, um, Winifred and I discussed about like Walnut Creek being like uh, what they have as public art as an example of what we can do for Richmond. So this is what they have. 
It's just kind of like a map with points for art. And I just did some examples for what we could possibly do with Richmond. So, um, so this is Civic Center. Um, so this is using the platform called ArcGIS. Basically, it's similar to that where you can just um, scroll through each point to see images and all these could be edited, but this is just an example of what we can do. Um, another example is on the city's transparent Richmond website, which is our open data portal. Um, all these points are artworks. And if you could click on a point, um, you could direct you to an art photo of the art piece. And the last example I visited was using Google Mind Maps. So this is like an example of how it's utilized in Las Vegas. So I just tried it with the Civic Center art in which you could click on a point and it pops up the photo of art piece and the, the, some, some additional information for art. So yeah, so this is what I just been looking around and testing out of how we could use the photos that Brian has taken. Well, that's really cool, Kyle. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Is any are any of these sites customizable and like can you change the, the CSS so that it's um, in line with? you know, maybe certain branding, or we could add very specific types of tours or um, additional um, information in terms of like how the user would click through things? Um, personally, like from what I see, no. Um, these are just like, you just like put in like the data points and it just pops up. However, yeah. we can help organize some of the information like in the different categories that we discussed so that there, um, there's ways that people want to only look at murals or they only want to look at sculpture. Or those are some th ways that I think things could be sorted at some point. So there's ways to, that Kyle and can manipulate you know, the, what we're looking for if we let him know how we want it, the information used. Kyle, would that be accurate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also yeah. like these are all like um well, I would say software that the city currently owns. I know like what Winifred discussed with me before is that the city might be open into looking into different softwares, like purchasing different softwares to assist with the mapping features. I'm not sure about the current state of that. Yeah, we've had a lot of conversations about that, but you know what, Tom? To me, this ties into what you were asking about in terms of how can you have, um, I, I think you were asking or suggesting that if you can combine bike tours with art tours throughout the city, then uh, this is the, the way the mapping gets started. But Yeah, no, I think the, the map is essential to that kind of activity, yeah. So one thing gets layered on top of the other essentially. So first we wanna get the art right and then once we get the art part right, then it'd be easier to uh, layer on the bike uh, information from wh whatever the organization is that we we're probably already working with. <laughs> yeah, Rich City Rides. Uh, that's but one. That's one. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would love to see examples of the paid software versions that might be cut more customizable for our needs because i know we i know we have we can we can maybe request this as part of our budget to purchase this software and i, I think this is great and i appreciate all the research into this kyle it's a really great start but i am just trying to think a little more long term in in being able to use this because this is a huge project that is being undertaken and i want to make sure that we can actually utilize it in the ways that we want to. And right now this stuff looks like great at a base level, but there's other ways I think we might want to use it. And if the, these softwares don't work for that, 
Um, it would just be nice to know what what are the other options available, and then you know what is the pricing for that, and is that something possible that we could put into our budget? Yeah, I, I think uh, in addition to that, it, it's uh, uh, making a list of what you wanted to do for you, and then I think that would be one way that Kyle can respond to um, his research and find out who can do what you're asking to have done that we're not already doing. So it's building, but hopefully. You know, uh, this gives you an idea clearly. Um, hold on, I think Phil's here. No, not yet. Um, so anyway, you need evidence. We've been working on it. Like I said, we're just, it, it's uh, quite a quite an effort. So does anybody have any other questions for Kyle or, or Brian? Uh, I had just had one question for Brian. I was just wondering if he had any uh, feedback about the uh, condition of the art um, that he's uh, photographed so far. What kind of problems are you seeing in terms of maintenance and um, you know damage to artworks and things like that? I do. When I drive around the city, I do notice, especially the mural that's on the uh, Richmond Senior Center. It's uh, drastically faded. Uh, I remember that used to be really, really vibrant. Uh, I know it's in the sun all day, um, so I know that art can kind of deteriorate. Also, too, uh, I noticed that other pieces of art, uh, like today I was down near Kaiser Hospital uh, capturing the, uh, the, the Kaiser uh, World War II uh, five installations there right on the street. And I did notice that there was some uh, bird residue on some of them, you know, so um, yeah, that's kind of, you know, tough to combat, right? Uh, and then also, too, Richmond has a really bad uh, weeds problem, right? So sometimes weeds grow up and it can be really tough to capture some of the images cleanly uh, without all of that in the way. Another example will be of the, uh, I forgot the name of the building, it's on McDonald. Uh, right across from the Target Shopping Center, the trees have grown up so big, you know, and then the leaves hang down. It's tough to get a clear shot. And that's one of the murals that expand the entire length and goes down, I think that's 41st Street. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's more like a cosmetic thing with, you know, the, the overgrown and things of that nature. Uh, but there are some uh, art that's been, you know, cleanly captured. Uh, so I can understand uh, your concern about the status of the uh, the art in that respect. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of it's kind of tough to mitigate, especially with capturing the images. You can't just Photoshop the weeds out. <laughs> <laughs> I did that one for the uh, for the Unity uh, mural that was down on the Parkway. Yeah. That was easy because it only had one light pole going through. The <laughs> Okay. Oh, also, that was easy to. Okay, oh, got sorry. it, got it. Well, we're actually uh, getting ready to uh, reinstall the um, senior center murals. So, but a lot of people have been bringing it up. Hopefully, in 30 days, you'll notice a difference. Okay, thank you very much, Linson. All right. Now, thank you both very much for your presentation. It's been um, very helpful um, and enlightening um, for us to hear about the status of the projects that you two are working on. Um, very good. So um, did you want to um, uh, uh, give us an update on the um, uh, Senior Center mural? You, you touched uh, on it a bit. Yes, as a matter of fact, um, the uh... The vendor is going to be joining us at about eight o'clock. Okay, all to right. Explain the whole process, and you know, I've been trying to, not trying. Every month they tell me, you know, they're making progress. So tonight they'll tell you their sales. <laughs> exactly. All right. What's going on. Okay. okay. Very good. I okay. believe I sent you pictures. I sent everybody yes, pictures you did. of the updated. So hopefully yes. you all yeah. were able to open those images up to see how beautiful they are. Yes. Uh, but we're not quite there yet. Okay. So, but um, so at eight o'clock we'll have a update. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, we're a little ahead of ourselves here, but that's okay. Um, my right. next, uh, the next item is the. Um, well, I'll let you go. Well, that's a, the, our next item is a, a discussion and a voting item. 
So, um, are, are we voting to accept the amended budget for yeah. this particular project and yeah. the scope of work? Yes. Yeah. So did you two, did you, Emily and Tom, have a chance to review um, the scope of work and schedule um, uh, that was submitted for uh, uh, revising that particular um, uh, project and uh, okay so I'll just ask if there's any um, are there any questions is there any discussion about this change before we take a vote uh, Tom or do we we see your mouth but we can't hear you was that a no I have no questions okay I have a couple of things I can add okay to, to this if you'd like Yes, please. Okay, so um, this is uh, the public art master plan proposal. And uh, Barbara Goldstein has a team of uh, several, a couple other uh, skilled um, interviewers and research uh, folks who write, they do this for a living, is write master plans for different cities across the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're normally, they actually do all of the ordinance policies and procedures, all the things that we've already done. Mm -hmm. They also tend to work on with others. So mm -hmm. since we're not in need of the whole package and we just need parts, mm -hmm. the idea is that uh, they basically would tell us how much it would cost to have everything. And then if we can't afford everything, then we'll let you know what we can't afford and we have to shave off a little here and there. So the bottom line is this. A lot of what they do uh, is going out into the community and things that we're not going to be able to have the bandwidth to, to do, quite frankly. They like to go to farmers markets and to festivals and places where the regular citizens of Richmond are going to be found who might not ever hear about any of our Zoom meetings or, you know, that. so they have uh, several locations um, that in other cities, they do at least 10 of them. So we asked them to maybe shave it down to seven or, you know, so that's part of the shaving and negotiation of reducing the budget from about 46,000 to 35. And 25 was our target number. So to go up, we're gonna go up and they're coming down and that's right in the middle. So um, we still have to talk about exactly what that consists of. But in terms of my research, uh, the Love Your Block program is a community services program. And they have a monthly uh, calendar, if you will, of all the different events that where this group will be able to go and find people, you know, already established. It's not like they have to create any uh, activities. Uh, they'll go to farmers markets, they'll go to maybe, the, well, Juneteenth, depending on when this contract is ready, and a variety of uh, locations, like I said, all strategically around the city mm -hmm. over a period of time. And they'll also be doing, uh, it's like, they call them pop-ups. Uh, they'll also be doing uh, stakeholder meetings that would include the mayor and city council members and you guys and uh, some other stakeholders uh, for that maybe you got, you want to define who else do you want them to talk to. Mm -hmm. And then they, you know, gather their information and then uh, they'll write a proposal um, that basically uh, combines all the information together. I'm trying to see if someone else is trying to come in here and um, then come up with a proposal of how we can have a more enriched uh, uh, program with fewer people. <laughs> so uh, do you have any questions about the proposal? So so the the budget is for 35, not 25. We're, we're meeting them halfway. We're oh, okay. Okay. That's much better. I feel much more comfortable about that. Okay. So they have, they have, I wanted to make sure they had enough people power to actually get all this work done. So um, they're coming okay. down 10 and we're coming up 10. So okay, that's how we perfect. came up with a, I think a reasonable number. Yes. I feel so, much more comfortable about that. Okay. So that's what we're voting on to make sure that we have the authority to release the, more money than what we had budgeted in order to move this contract forward. Okay. So why don't we uh, take a motion from someone to uh, accept the uh, revised uh, scope of work and schedule and budget for this project as presented um, uh, today to us. Can I get a motion? 
I'll motion to accept. Okay, second. Second. All right, we have first and a second and uh, all in favor? Great, passes unanimously. Wonderful. Okay, so moving on, we have uh, discussion items. Um, are you gonna lead the discussion um, of these discussion items, um, uh, Fred? Some of them. Okay. Uh, and obviously we're gonna, we're moving a little ahead of our schedule, which is never a bad thing. Nope. So we're just gonna move some of the items up. Um, but let me just finish writing this note here. Okay. Um, All right. Second. All right. And 35. Okay. All right. Uh, so we can either move to the information or the discussion items. Which would you prefer? Uh, discussion items, we have enough for A. Okay. B is coming, and we have uh, enough to talk about C also, which is. Okay, and, combining. Okay, so why don't we just work on, do those? We'll just go through our discussion items that we can. Okay, so the A uh, discussion item is um, the types of projects that we want to do for next year. Mm -hmm. So I think um, there's not a whole lot of update for the RNCC collaboration. They had their meeting this past Monday. They meet the first Monday of every month. Mm -hmm. And uh, Emily and Tom, I'm not sure if you have anything you want to add to that item. From your meeting with them? The new artwork that we're talking about in the communities. I, so, I, I'm just curious if they've gotten any responses yet. Uh, no, that's why I was hoping that um, we would be able to, you know, have some comment on Monday. Uh, just to jog their memory, I understand that there was a big basketball game on Monday night and they didn't have, you know, their normal um, crowd either. But we, they did I pass. Think, the, I'm sorry. I think we can uh, ask the uh, uh, leadership at RNCC to uh, send out an email, uh, a sort of uh, jogging uh, a memory email and ask people to, if they're going to respond or if they have any questions and to direct it to uh, to the back. Yeah, that's what they just did with their meeting announcement for this past Monday. Oh, they, okay. put, they put the the uh, survey in there and yeah. But they're not, you know, I think, uh, well, I, it needs a little extra. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think that if we just get one or two responses out of 44, then that's really all that we're in need of um, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Do and, we have uh, a list of all the uh, uh, neighborhood council chairs? Yes, I've sent it to you. Plus, it's online. So if you want me to send it to you again. Um, I'll pull you. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. OK. Um, yeah, so it's a good idea. I think that what it's telling us is that we can't depend only on uh, that one source uh, to uh, maybe accomplish the goal that we have. Mm -hmm. and as we uh, go around the neighborhoods and see different buildings that have large blank walls on them. You know, I, for instance, reached out to um, an artist who I know lives in a particular building that has a huge wall on the backside that I don't know if he owns the building or not. So the question is, if he owns the building, would he be willing to have a mural be painted on his, you know, building? So I think uh, that's going to be a big part of the challenge for the whole city trying to find a location of private property, but it's not impossible. So over the next 30 days, we'll see what people come up with. Is there a sense that there is a capacity issue amongst the council leadership to participate in this effort? Well, it's hard to be able to identify a private property or even a city property that would um, be available for an, an indefinite period of time to have some artwork either painted on it or put in front of it. If you want to put a mural on it, it really is a challenge because they have a list of surplus property, but they're trying to sell that property. So if we put a great mural on a building and then it gets sold and they don't care for the mural, then, you know, that's a whole nother story. 
So it's a catch-22 situation. It seemed like a simple, wonderful idea, and it might still be, but it's just going to take a little bit of extra work. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to do some research to find out how other cities, you know, manage that because we see beautiful murals all over the place, and it doesn't mean that we can't either. But there, I got to find out more information. And does it have? It doesn't have to be a mural, right? No, nope. I mean, it could be some other type of it art. It could be all different kind of art. Okay. I mean, okay. we could just start with all the city parks. Like, there's, there's, there's plenty of places that are city. You know, I, I guess I'm. I, let's just. I, I think maybe it's. We should wait until we get. We have a deadline in June, so at this point, the only thing we can do is maybe nudge them to remind them to, and see what we can get, and then after June, we should make that a discussion point. Mm -hmm. we yeah, then, yeah, absolutely. In between now and then, when you're driving around and you see a pop possible location, write down the address and let's you know do some due diligence amongst ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 All right. And anything else? There's a pride event, I see. Uh, well, Phil asked that we put this on the agenda. Yes. Uh, because in the past, um, we talked about putting a calendar together so that we would know when events were coming up. Mm -hmm. And if there, if there was a need or interest in being a co-sponsor or mm -hmm. whatever it might be. Uh, so apparently there's a pride event that's coming up and Part of it is the question, are we a financial sponsor or community sponsor? Mm -hmm. So at this point, since apparently the request was made like two weeks before the event, as much as we could do is be a community sponsor. But what kind of process do we need to go through as a group to all agree that that's a group that you want to be able to sponsor? So that's the reason why it's, it's helpful to have these items on agenda ahead of time so that you can actually hear it and vote on it one way or another because it's a collective you know, uh, answer. It's not, a lot of times people just ask me and I'm like, I'm not gonna make that decision, just me. There's a group of people. What does a community sponsor entail? No money. Basically, I mean, but what do we do? Your like, name, what... Having your name showing support of whatever the initiative might be or Okay. Yeah, but, I mean, we've done it in the past. I know that mm -hmm. at least, um, yeah, Rack has been a, at least, a thing. I've seen their booth, I think, at a Pride event in Richmond. So I also yeah. suggested, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, I, I think, I don't know what that does. And in, in, in terms of being a community sponsor, if we're not actually doing anything besides putting our name up there, or like, I would love to be able to like, help financially support community groups if we feel like they're um, influencing the arts in, in the city. And I know we need a calendar for that or we need to talk about that, but I don't know, is there a, if we do get a calendar, is there a fund or something that, should we put something in the budget so that we can then um, help support these organizations or these events as they happen? Well, I would say this, that um, starting the new fiscal year, which is, you know, July 1st, uh, we do have um, a line item for social media, like advertising, but I don't know if this falls in that kind of category, and maybe it does, but either way, it needs to be agendized and voted on 30 days in advance so that we know that everyone agrees and then uh, we have money available and that kind of thing. I think it's about $5,000, but it's mostly for those, you know, um, advertising for social media. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I'll supporting group, I, I'm sorry, Linson, please. That's, go ahead. Right. That's right. No, I was going to say that I talked with Phil about it and it seemed to me like the group would be a good uh, applicant for our uh, NPA mini grants. Um, so we're, they're too late for this year, but next year it comes right at the right time where if they want to uh, apply for a mini grant, they could use a mini grant to support the event. activities that are going oh, on as part okay. of the Pride event. Okay. Yes. yes. Well, that's a good point. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do think um, 
I mean, I guess I would love to figure out like if we, we do have this $5,000 social media budget, if it could be a larger marketing budget and perhaps $5,000 goes towards social media. I don't know how, what we would, like, are we paying someone to actually do, do the social media? Cause what that has been a part of the conversation. There's a consultant who apparently is a former commissioner and he's come to one of our meetings and submitted a resume and all that. So we're trying to move towards getting extra support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if we could, you know, set aside a, a little bit of money so that we can be a financial supporter to um, a set number of, of events that we vote on in advance at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And we give, you know, a small amount, like $200, $300 or something. And our, our name is on a, you know, supported by the yeah. council. Cause I think these, we're, we're really good at, um, sort of bringing together small individual groups, but we're not really good at supporting events and um, um, other types of art that is beyond um, like performance or music or theater. And I, it would be great to, I think, to have more of an involvement in that. And it, mm -hmm. it could be something small. Um, so I don't know what those events would be, but I, I'm guessing between us, we can just come up with a list and, you know, perhaps we can say, you know, these 10 events this year, we'll, we'll give $200 to each. Well, I think that that's a good idea. And, you know, it depends on when you look at the beginning of the year, we look at the beginning of the year is July. So in two months, okay. we'll have this, add this to our agenda and continue this conversation, but be specific to say, we want X amount of dollars to go towards X, you know, group or be specific. So I think that this is a great idea. Mm -hmm. and something that we can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. All right, anything else uh, for uh, type of projects for next budget year? Anybody else got any ideas? Well, any? we're we're going to do the large, I don't know what we're calling it. If we get this, our, that, our we're, we're working towards that. I know we had our, um, there was some discussion about continuing the COVID mini grants, but personally, I don't feel like we should be doing that. Um, I think that's why we, I mean, that's why I was advocating for one large project. And I also feel like um, RAC is already doing, you know, good work there with doing these kind of smaller, um, smaller projects. So I think focusing on that, the one large, Art installation um, and really getting this art inventory in a place where it needs to be, and then finding a way to um, market it and make it more user friendly in the way that, like Tom recommended with this bike tour. It's not just getting the map up; it's it's actually hiring a graphic designer to create a map that could be then used digitally or physically or something like that. I'd love to be able to actually start to put the inventory to use in a way that's um, highlighting the art enrichment. Great idea. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I see uh, as we're talking is that some of this information can get folded into this public art master plan that we're talking about as you know, because it, part of it's marketing and that's what master plans do is spell out terms of new projects. So this is good. Okay. Uh, and then I think we've already identified maintenance needs as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some, sculpture that's totally cracked out and there's no title for it no artist name it's one of those pieces that when it falls apart it kind of just falls apart i don't know what you do with it anyway um that's part of our unknown we'll take pictures of it and say uh, we just don't know who the artist is and the condition is horrible <laughs> you know mm -hmm. as far as the reports are concerned mm -hmm. all right Linson.
Well, at a certain point, we'll also, I would guess that it would need to be dismantled, you know, I mean, and laid to rest if it's no longer functioning. Well, that's what the condition report is going to tell us by the time we finish with the art inventory. And yes, it'll, it'll, it won't fall apart within a year, but okay. we definitely don't want it falling on anybody either. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, so item B, the Ukwe Park didactic signage. Uh, um, you did send out uh, some today. pictures. Yes, I just received some information today. She'll be here at eight, which is the oh, time. Oh, okay, that's the yeah. eight o'clock. Yeah, so maybe we uh, talk about C. All right. A little. Yep. All right, so um, the notion is that um, because we're uh, such a um, diminished body um, that we combine the rack and the pack meetings and hold them one time a month. I don't know what the uh, thinking is around. Maybe we do one hour as rack and one hour as pack. I'm um, not sure what your thoughts are concerning um, how they, you know, how the meeting would work. So um, uh, why don't you give me, uh, give us uh, some of your thoughts if you've had a chance to think about it uh, in terms of what it would look like to hold the meetings at the same time, uh, at least on the same day, not at the same time, but <clears throat> during that same meeting period that we have set aside. <clears throat> Is it, is it possible um, that we can um, winnow the meetings down so that we have an hour for each? Is that gonna be doable or is that not enough time? Um, would love to have some feedback. Typically it's not enough time, but we're not doing smaller projects. I mean, I think it's it kind of during certain times of the year, like with um, PAC, when you guys are in the middle of reports and um, pulling in all of the, the groups um, and that takes a lot of time. And then when we have um, the 1% uh, informational in, um, items, those end up taking a lot of time. Like we, we almost always go a full two hours and it's not like a lot of talking during that time or, or discussion. And I'm all for combining meetings. Like I don't wanna meet more than once if possible. <laughs> so if there's a way to do it, that would be great. I just don't know how to do that unless we are like not sitting in each other's meetings, um, but we still, we don't have enough people. So I'm not really sure. Oh, everybody on the pack is also on the rack. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it would mean the rack adjourns and then the pack members stay in the meeting. Which is everybody. So we have a, a smaller, we have a pack so group too. and yeah. a rack group, but the rack group includes the pack group. So that group doesn't include the rack group, right? Right, that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I feel the uh, agendas of the two groups are sufficiently different that uh, they're really are two separate meetings, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it would uh, that they don't overlap. I don't see the particular advantage of having both on the same night. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is an advantage. Uh, I'm just not sure. It would be honestly nice if I could just focus on pack work and not attend the rack meetings. But I know, I don't know. Well, that just means like basically myself and Tom and Phil have to go to two meetings and then everyone else. I, and you, Winifred, you're doing the two meetings. Well, that's the reason why we were. Yeah, that's. What, <laughs> That's why we were trying to figure out a way to combine them into mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. to be more efficient, but also- if But we... it's not more efficient at all because we're, we're sitting in and talking about stuff that like we have nothing, like there's so much other work that we need to do 
that's just not related to what Rack is doing. Well, here's another part of it. Um, I totally understand what you're saying because I think we've been getting a whole lot of work accomplished uh, in the for, for every single meeting that we have. And maybe it me means it's a 15 minute commission meeting in a 45 or, or not 15 minutes, but you know, the, the proportion, it's not just half and half. Mm -hmm. But um, that's why we wanted to bring it up today. We'll talk about it again in June and be able to come up with some kind of plan that starts in July. Mm -hmm. And so we don't really need to have a long conversation about it tonight. I know it's a kind of complicated, but the fewer people we have, it just uh, doesn't make sense to have two meetings. So, um, Emily? I'm just wondering also, um, Linson, if you're, how you're feeling about um, uh, Flo leaving and how, how we will move forward without a chairperson. Um, and then if that's something you would take on over there or would that mean you'd be leaving our group? <laughs> I guess I'm wondering what the ramifications of that are. Well, I think the conversation has been that I could try to do to chair both committees. You know, I don't know. Would you like to chair PAC? Is that something that not you really, like to but on? I will if I need to. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing, okay. I'm not looking for extra yes. stuff right now. But if it means that we can't get things, if it means like some we can't move forward because no one's willing to step up, then I will do it. But I would but if you're happy, if you're okay doing it. You know, it's great. it's a it's a lot for me too, because I work uh, I work more than full time. I can't believe how many jobs I have at the age that I am. It's like my life won't stop slowing down, you know, won't, won't. So, you know, if I, I, I'm not going to leave the groups without a leader, you know, leadership uh, to at least manage the meetings. Um, so, um, you know, I think that. Um, and we also have, well, actually, Melissa is going to be leaving too. So we're getting ready to lose Melissa. So we and won't. There's have no one. So it's just you. Yeah, it's just me. <laughs> it's oh my just gosh. Me. Yeah. Well, you're going to have a pretty short meeting then. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, <laughs> okay. If it's just you, then we should combine. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So so we're, we're sort of winnowing down to just a very few people. Yeah. So um, why, why don't we, um, you know, revisit this again, you know, in the next month I'll be, I've been working with Winifred and reviewing, you know, all the materials and trying to stay on top of everything that's uh, going on. And, um, and, you know, we'll see if I, if I can't do it, if I need help, I'll holler you know, and if you're willing to, you know, jump on and we can figure out a way because I think because we're going to look different, we just need to imagine how we could work a little differently. It may be that we don't work the same as we've always been working. So, uh, and I don't know um, really what the rules are. I don't know what we absolutely must do. You know, Winifred can help us with that. If there's parts of this that we can um you know eliminate uh, reduce um then we can try to do that but i think that we're gonna the next couple of months are gonna be um they're gonna help us to understand really about who we are as this smaller body and how we're how we may or may not be able to work so i think right now we just don't know exactly what that's going to look like Yeah, thank you so much for all your work and being willing to just keep moving forward. <laughs> well, speaking of moving forward, we have several of our uh, guests who are waiting to, uh, they're a little early, which is fine. Yes. Uh, I think, uh, as we mentioned, we will continue this conversation uh, in June. And, yes. Uh, I think that that's, I'm glad that we had a chance to bring it up. Yes, me too. Okay, so Ukwe Park is the next um, item, and Sherilyn 
uh, is going to be promoted to panelists. Uh, so she has uh, her own style in terms of how she wants to have this conversation. Okay. Uh, and th what we're doing is just getting information that will help her inform uh, whatever she needs to finish her work. So welcome, Sherilyn. Hi, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Sherilyn Oda, the graphic designer for the didactic signage for Okawi Park. Thank you for the opportunity to present tonight and more importantly, to work in conjunction with all of you and the Confederated Villages of Lisbon. So tonight I will be introducing phase two, signage for Okawi Park, the history and healing plants and then providing information for installation. So if I could share my screen. Mm -hmm. So share. Okay, so um, it's basically two signs and the size that I picked was 36 by 48. That's, it's pretty big, but we can make it smaller if we need to, but I don't exactly know what the space is. And basically this first slide here is, is what you usually see when you walk into a park. Um, it's a little history, it's uh, about the park and the language is pretty much the brochure that's been handed out uh, as we introduce uh, Oakaway Park to, other, uh, to the public. Um, let's see, the slide two. A tribal members selected the plants for the landscaping and Okawi is a gathering place for tribal members. So their knowledge and usage of plants will be shared with the public during uh, select gatherings. So basically what I did was I illustrated uh, these plants here, these healing plants, and I illustrated them, you know, all like in a circle. Now I didn't get a chance to put underneath each um, circle, but you know, the, the name of each plant will be listed under that. So that's basically what we have. We have sign one, information about the park, and sign two is, um, you know, information about the landscaping. So I'm not going to go into detail with, with all of this. Uh, this is a different format that you usually use. Usually you get the PDF first and you have questions. This is just for me to inform you that um, there are basically two types of materials for park signage. And the first one's called a high pressured laminated panel or HPL. It's basically paper that's embedded with um, melamine and then uh, pressure treated with extremely high heat. The second one again is, um, it's a graphic marking film, industrial grade protective over laminate. Uh, combined with uh, UV protection, and that's called a tough panel. So here comes my sales point. Both types are guaranteed not to peel, blister, crack, or fade, and they clean with soap, water, organic solvents, and non-abrasive removers, and each has a 10-year lifespan. The only difference is that the tough panel has a, a UV coating so that it doesn't fade. So what you see in subways and in the street is coated with, you know, usually coated metal that's coated with this panel. So without taking time from the meeting, the handouts um, will talk about the pros and cons of each of these materials. And then we go to slide four, and this is basically the types of mounts. You know, the, the last time we talked about the, um, the park signage. And so I thought I would just go over the types of mounts that we have for these signs. Basically 24 by 36. Uh, we have angle mounts and we have upright mounts. And um, let me show you a picture. So here are angled mounts and they come framed. You know, here we have like cent uh, centered posts. Here we have front posts. And over here on the right, these are frameless. And these are called angled. So either 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 one of those would work. The next one is uh, called an upright frameless pedestal. And so instead of being angled, it sits straight up. It's usually held together with brackets in the back. And since neither one is heavy, um, they won't need that much more additional support. So 
I think that's really all I have for tonight. And um, if you've got any questions now, the difference with, with the mounting uh, will be costs and aesthetics. Uh, that's just, again, I think a question to, to ask, or, ask ourselves is, where will these signs be placed in the park? And that would help you decide if you want it upright, if you want it angled, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have any questions, anyone? Um, I, I personally, I think you should do angled. Like that would be the direction I would go since we're going to be viewing the plants behind it and the upright would be sort of blocking views. Okay. I think we want to keep as much views open. It would be great to see a mock-up of the signage on the actual structure with um, a person for scale. Okay. And I am curious um, what the font size is when you're, and if it's been like you've been looking at it for ADA access and for legibility in terms of contrast and things like that. And if we'll have an opportunity to um, make any markups or, or comments on the signage. I know it seemed like you were still in process with it. Like you I am, kind of, nothing's really yeah. set in stone. So yeah, I don't want to if take we have a too time, much time just to do a look through at some point and give feedback, that, that would be great. Okay, final signage size. And the and they could size. Start, start with what you've submitted uh, today, read through it and if there's some glaring things that you want to change this, you know, this is the beginning of that process. But as many of you recall, the uh, brochure that we created had like a whole, whole lot of people who vetted it. So that's the information. I'm not, I'm not talking about the content. I'm talking about the way it's designed. The format. The okay. Elements yeah, that are I, I will standing out like for height and, and accessibility, oh. font size, like when it's blown up. Mm -hmm. Got it. And then a mock-up, correct? Yep. I actually uh, feel the opposite in terms of uh, angled versus upright. I actually think the upright is more utilitarian. You know, I think it it I think it's more accessible um, for uh, people in wheelchairs or um, because the angled ones you have to be up high in order to be able to see what's on the panel. Whereas with the upright, you can, it, you, it, I think that it's a clearer access in terms of visual, uh, being able to see uh, all the information. And also, you know, these are, uh, people are gonna wanna take selfies and pictures, you know, next to them. And I think the upright frames uh, are more um, supportive of those kinds of activities. So I don't know, that would just be my thoughts on it. Well, I, I like the angled, uh, the frameless angled signs uh, best. I think they're more user friendly and and they have have less of a uh, separating aspect, of separating people from the uh, from the plants. Uh, they're they're less less obtrusive, and uh, I think they're better looking. You know, we can combine the two upright or well, you know, I don't know. I mean, this one here on the bottom looks like it's a double sign to me because you can see, you know, that makes it pretty long. It makes it like almost eight feet, you know, and that's pretty, that's a pretty long sign. I could, you know, probably condense it and put them both on. But again, like I said, without knowing what the budget is, where these are going to be placed, um, I think all the suggestions are good, but not knowing where, uh, we'll put them exactly, you know. Um, How's that going to be decided? So we're going to go to the site uh, with several people, whoever's available that day. We'll have uh, mock-ups as far as the size of the cardboard and places to hold up. Okay. Yeah, that kind of thing. All right. Very good. Um, and I think, um, I think when we get the actual uh, mock-up on an actual sign, we'll be able to see the angles of it. Because as long as it's at a 45 degree angle, that's ADA accessible. So we just need to make sure it's, that is what is accepted. That's what, what is recommended in terms of reading um, information uh, that is at an angle. Um, so I, I think as long as we hit that, it's fine. And again, it, yeah, if it, if, if, 
I just don't want it to be blocking a view of the actual park. Like we want the whole point is that people are looking out onto the, the plants and seeing all that. And so if it's up, unless if, if it's up and that's like in an area we don't want people to look into, then that makes sense to me. Cause it's just sort of is becomes it, a wall. Is, uh, so these are not the signs. This is the signs for inside the park. This isn't the sign it's not going to be the sign that people see when they drive up. This is no. going to be as they're no. walking around. You need to be inside. Seeing, yes, yeah. yes, and yes. Once yeah. like you kind of want it to be somewhere close to as you're entering or yes. before you're entering. It's like, say, if you're going to a museum, yes. there's always like some kind of entry panel yes. that you read before you go into the exhibit. Yes. Yes. And then, um, you know, somewhere along the way will be this other plant sign. Yes. Which it could be right next to it if you want. But again, like I said, without knowing what the budget is. Um, you mean the fabrication budget? The fab, yeah, fabrication yeah. budget. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it it's difficult to know what my constraints really are. But mm -hmm. these are options that we will, you know, consider as, as you go into the fabrication part. Any other questions? Mm -mm. You're yawning up there. You have a question. <laughs> Am I supposed to like click that hand? Tom has a question. Oh. Tom, do you have a question or are your hand still up? Old hand. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. see you. So I think um, one of the things that we want to give some feedback on, well, let me ask you this, uh, Sherilyn the size of the frame itself is going to be the same whether it's uh, uh, angled or not and the angle is uh, that is something that we, we would have to decide um, at, before you can finalize whatever the amount of text is that you're going to be putting on this didactic sign there's a large directional sign, which we voted on about two months ago. So, Linson, maybe you, you didn't see that one. Um, no, I don't remember it. Now, now we're looking at the content, and then we okay. end up putting all them together as a package before okay. we're, we're finished. Okay. How many signs total are we going to have? Well, this is one big sign. Then we have the the the, the uh, directional sign is larger than this, this, this type of uh, didactic signage. And then... We're talking about well we were talking before about botanical markers so there's eight uh beds and each right, bed right. will have uh certain yes. types of yeah yes yes okay got it got you it. wouldn't consider readjusting the layout based on an angled versus an upright i feel like an upright would be a different size than an well, angled version which would I'm be more explore, horizontal i'm going to explore both of them emily you know okay. um you know, since I've got those choices, uh, I need a little bit more time, but I will definitely take everybody's suggestions uh, in tonight as I mock them up and, you know, see what it looks like. You know, it, uh, I may even get to the point where, you know, if I get to some sort of final kind of thing, uh, you know, I can certainly get it printed, you know, uh, a printout and, you know, mounted so that we could take a look at it. Yeah. Okay. I think that that'll be the best way to, do, to, to go. Yeah, it's too hard to the site. even for myself, yeah. you know, what I do sometimes is I have a fairly large printer and I'll just print out a certain portion that will give me an idea of how big the, um, the what the font size and what's in between mm -hmm. uh, the spacing. Okay. Okay. All right. That sounds great. Thank you so much for your work on this. Thank you, everyone. Now, how yeah. do I leave here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to say goodbye. And okay. I'm say goodbye. We'll see you next time. Okay, thank you. Oh, there, leave. Go away, it says. It says you, can end, you can just end. <laughs> there you go. So now I'm going to bring in our next um, guest. Uh, and this is uh, Spark, the Spark team for the Senior Center mural. Okay. And we have Samantha and Carlos, I think. Samantha and Carlos, are you there? Samantha. Hi there. Hey, are you Carlos? 
You're Carlos? Yes, I'm Carlos. Okay, good, good. I'm Winifred Day. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you, Winifred. And uh, Samantha looks like she's coming in. Hello. Hi, Samantha. Hi, nice to meet everyone. And you are meeting the Public Art Advisory Committee. And uh, Linson, I'll let you continue. Wonderful. Okay, you're going to give us an update on the uh, Senior Center uh, restoration, mural restoration? That's right. All That's right. right. Go right ahead. Cool. Okay, let's see if the share works. Uh -huh. Well, for those of you who don't know the history, uh, this is a project. Oh, well, looks like he's going to tell. Uh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> no, we have uh, definitely been uh, Thank quite you. involved in this one. This is actually yes, it did one of the beloved started. murals that uh, we've been able to to do in uh, California. So, um, so as as you remember, and you're so familiar with the uh, Richmond uh, Identities Project. Uh, I believe we began working at it back in 2011. So I was part of the artistic team. It was Judy and myself, and then a range of community members and artists on the ground. Um, I don't know if Gerard Gutierrez is here today, but um, it was quite an amazing pr uh, process because um, we really invested all of our energy on casting the widest net and articulating the very specific stories of these many different moments within Richmond's uh, history, which was so unique. Um, you know, before we get into details into the, um, the history of the piece. Um, so th this particular installation that was done originally, um, you know, there were a lot of budget constraints uh, related to the, the, the Public Art Commission at the time. Um, and so we had made it very clear that the, uh, the material that was going to be used uh, would be um, uh, temporary, that like it wouldn't be able to withstand a sufficient amount of durability, the, the, the building is cast in the constant sunlight, um, and there would be challenges. And so everybody understood that and like we got affirmations to proceed. Um, so we did the best we could with what we had left in the budget. Uh, the project back then, 2011, 12, 13, I think it was like a three year process to just get to this uh, stage. Um, this is called a muriflage installation. So it uses an adhesive acrylic uh, material uh, so that it uh, appears as if it's uh, painted on the surface. Um, and we installed, you know, the pieces, they're each individual, five individual murals, they're over a particular painted surface. And uh, what we've been able to do since then, we've been innovated quite a bit on uh, the digital uh, mural process. And so one thing that we recommended, that we recommended back in 2018 when we were approached uh, to address this challenge of the project, was to find an economic solution to be able to, when the material inevitably fades, to make it economically feasible to, to replace uh, those artworks. So we've uh, been using this uh, mechanism in our uh, installations across uh, California. And it's essentially, it's a flat framed uh, structure that pulls the artwork taut. So the artwork is sitting directly on the surface and it still appears completely as if it's painted on the surface. But uh, you wouldn't know it until you get it in, like close to it that you can actually begin to carefully unbuckle all of the different little facets that hold the artwork together. And what we love about this, and we've actually done quite a lot of these cylindrical buildings since we did Richmond, um, these actually bend. They bend naturally and contour to the, to the surface of the building. Um, so as you can see here, the, the, the proposal is to install the aluminum frames uh, over the existing areas. The frames will be painted to match the exact uh, deep chocolate brown that you see currently on the building. And uh, they should completely like disappear in the eye. Um, totally like what's really nice about the system is that it doesn't require like structural engineering. It's literally hugging the wall. There's no load that's placed on the wall. And so we've been able to do this successfully in like, I don't know, I think we've done maybe three or four dozen of these installations. Um, so the process behind the creation of the work uh, over, over those three years was really intense. We actually went up many times to Richmond. We were able to host uh, multiple community workshops, but also we went to like individuals. And I think we, we were there for quite some time. And then also um, uh, some of our partners that were working up in Richmond came down to Spark and also did a residency with us in the Digital Mural Lab, which is where these pieces were, were assembled and, and painted. Um, there was a lot of back and forth, and fortunately, uh, we had uh, Gerard 
uh, Gutierrez um, in Richmond who was able to go and photograph and add additional content. And everywhere we went, every uh, interview that we did, people came together and they would show us these identity cards, these really powerful kind of documents of what they had achieved and what they had done. And that became the, the inspiration for the creation of the Richmond Identities Project. Um, it very quickly became a, a historical kind of reflection of all of these different moments and eras and migrations into Richmond. Um, the construction of the industrialization of the Kaiser shipyards was really something that was popularly known uh, for the residents of Richmond. But what was always the big question was like, why did everybody come from everywhere? And suddenly there was this booming cultural hub that like was really the center of West Coast music, art, and like this lively community. So these are the pieces today. They're hanging, uh, they just uh, were applied uh, UV protective coatings. This is something that we didn't use in the past. We didn't have this technology. Uh, we developed this technology in house. It's an incredibly durable material that's allowed, allows the, the uh, UV light to not degrade the ink as fast, but everything fades, everything fades. So that is just one thing that we have to accept. Um, but we've also upgraded the material. The material is like, I think, 18 ounce vinyl, and it has Kevlar reinforcement on the entire perimeter of the artwork. So it'll be really sturdy. It'll stand up to hurricanes and it should be just fine. Um, but they look fantastic. I mean, these pieces, they're hanging right, they, they're already put away um, in our facility. They're all ready to go. Um, let's see. So this is just kind of like a, um, a zoom in. So in addition to the to the murals, we did a publication, we did a 40 page uh, historical description of what are in the mural. So we have this PDF, we're happy to share it with y'all so that you could take a look at it. But we had printed them back then. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're completely gone. Um, you know, we did this just kind of out of the, the just the love for the project and the people who we got to meet. So it wasn't part of the anything, <laughs> we just did it because it was like such a massive like visual archive that we were able to collect. And then we realized, no, people need to know who Mother Wanda was. And, uh, you know, Courtney uh, Cummings, uh, who was one of the participants, that's her, her mother here uh, on a spiritual journey to establish the Native American Health Center. Um, all of these are original, real little photographs and documents that people brought us. And we were able to scan them and incorporate them into these massive uh, uh, murals. Um, you know, just every one of the histories that's been written up, articulated really thoroughly. And you can, what's really wonderful is that you can sometimes see the original like archival material that made up that artwork. You know? So it's very, very wonderful to see that. And, and this was actually the inspiration for the, for the project uh, to begin with. This is Kai's, uh, uh, K Kale, Kale's mother. Is Gerard, I, I don't know if Gerard Gutierrez is on, um, is he by any chance? Mm -hmm. no? um, okay. Well, well, not a problem. Um, but Kao's mother, um, Kao had come in and she had presented with us with this little tiny identity card. I mean, it literally was that shape and size. And this was a Kaiser company card. And that became the convention for like being able to communicate all of these different eras of, of Richmond history. Um, yeah, so I mean, we want to share this with everyone and, you know, that way uh, the community can really dive in again into the history. So not, not only are we restoring like the, the artistic quality, the imagery, the vibrancy of the pieces, but we also get to reconnect people to this important powerful archive. Um, so that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. How many pages are in the book? 40. Yeah. Um, you know, so we, we actually had to reflect on this project quite a bit recently because, um, you know, we're, we're used to being able to turn these around. And uh, when, you know, we looked at where we had uh, met with resistance installed, and of course, you know, we've all lived through a pandemic for the last couple of years. I was like truly shocked. Samantha did the analysis the other day. We have been stalled on this project going on and off for three and a half years, and we've received no payments. And believe it or not, this whole project was ready to go in August of 2019. So like the hardware, our subcontractors, everybody's just been waiting. Usually the way that these projects work for us is we provide a work plan, the client, the agency, the community group, they approve the work plan, they issue the first milestone payment, 
We fabricate the artwork, the installation is scheduled, completed. We get the final milestone, we're done. We're gone, we're done, we're over, we're on to the next project. And so far, this is the log that we, we, I, we summarize this, you know, this is just, oh, it's so long. And we just can't do it anymore. We're a small nonprofit, you know, we're a team of about seven artists. And um, we just, we really, really, really need help to be able to get this over the line. Structural engineering, encroachment permits, all this stuff, it's just, it's way beyond. So if we can get any assistance, um, you know, whatever it may be, I mean, if we can even get a little bit of payment, because we've actually billed for this project three times and we've received no payment. Um, and this, this is a minor, 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 um, minor project. So um, somewhere like within, you know, this, uh, contract being redone two or three times like it was it was stipulated that like we wouldn't be able to like you know secure funds for this and so it, it's really been it's now starting to become a reality for us that like I can't believe that we've actually gone this far and um and you know and, and our subcontractors my goodness I mean the, these are community people who live in Richmond and it's just through their grace and care for this project that they stayed on with us but if we lose them, then we're in trouble, right? Because then we have to go up yeah. and do the installation. Well, we're 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 yeah. at the tail end of this, so you know this is new information for me. I've only yeah. been in this position not since it, the whole project started. So you are under contract, and you can submit a at least a half payment. Is I don't see a problem with that, but we thought that Wonderful. you were trying to finish everything and just receive one invoice at that time. As far as oh. the encroachment and permits are concerned, we're doing mm -hmm. we're managing all that for you, but it has, to, it has to be done in order to uh, for you to do the installation. So we can't uh, submit the application until we have the insurance information from your vendor, and that's what I, I'm not sure why that's taking a while. But I mean, we're we're making progress here as far as I, okay. I know, because I didn't know back in 2018 was when you started all this. So yeah. going yeah. forward, uh -huh. going forward, since submit one half now. And, okay. you know, like I said, the only thing that we're waiting for is the insurance from your uh, vendor so that we can do the uh, encroachment permit. And you, we, we don't need, that's all we need. <laughs> Okay, well, we because we submitted our insurance, I think, two or three times already. I mean, every year, right? It expires every Excuse year. So me? We well, uh, we well, submitted our insurance multiple no, times. It's, it's not your insurance. It's the, the vendor who's doing the actual installation. That's what we're waiting for. Yeah, we can we can actually put them under our insurance if we opt to do that um, as well. But I do know that Samantha, the uh, installer, has is preparing his insurance certificate. Is that right? Correct. Yes, they were. Um, they're a small, you know, inst installer, so they were out on a project. So they're preparing the insurance certificate. They have the requirements, and they have ensured me that they're going to be sending it as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But but if they're if they have any trouble, like we will put them and completely cover them under our insurance. Well, so that that, that, that is fine. If you told me that a month ago, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. So I appreciate hearing that. Like I said, at this point today. If you're able to, not today, I mean, we're, it's evening, so tomorrow, uh, submit the one half. So when you're finished, then we give you the other half and we can't move forward until we have the encroachment permit, which requires the insurance. I, I'm assuming that you're not planning on coming up to, because uh, you're lost, located in Los Angeles. I don't think from what I have heard that you're planning on coming up here and overseeing the project, which means that I'm the one who needs to do that, which means that I'm definitely going to expect that we have insurance from your vendor and then we're good. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then uh, if you're there, Winifred, I mean, I'd be happy to be on the call with you there. And um, it's the same installer. So I actually did the installation with him in the first round. So he knows exactly like the standards and what he has to do. And well, everything. that would be great. So, so that means that he should have an installation plan ready also. So that's something that Public Works is asking for. Yeah, and he already does. He already has that and he gets it. He's got the, the, the marching orders. So, OK. All right. So do you, um, so in terms of what Spark is going to facilitate tomorrow is sending the insurance and a uh, 50% uh, invoice for the contract. 
and that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. And then once we get the clearance from you, we will schedule the installer, we will ship the hardware, we will ship the artwork, everything uh, to the installer so you can get started. Is the that right? Clearance, the clearance comes by way of the public works department. There's another layer of people who have to, you know, like I said, review the installation plan and we have to have uh, that helps determine what uh, encroachment, quite frankly, there is, you know, in terms of public works have to be, has to be able to know how much traffic they're going to have to block off in order for your guy to use a scissor lift in order to, you know, do the installation. That's what that part is about. So I, we can't get the encroachment permit until we know exactly what the plan is. And, and that's why they're all connected. Okay. All right, all right. We'll, we'll resend that, uh, the, the documents and um, we'll make sure that that gets- Well, I got, I got an installation plan that just showed the materials. It didn't show like any more than that. So maybe I overlooked it or something. Yeah, we have a scope of work that was been submitted and all that that it outlines the the work plan. So um, we'll put that together in, in another. You have a drawing in there also. Was there a drawing like the drawing that we just saw here tonight? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everything that we do is spec'd out because we're working with installers. I for, assume. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah the drawings like. Lena Fred, I I wonder if to help this process, you could talk to Public Works and say. This is what's happening, and they're submitting, and you know we're getting this encroachment um, permit. Is there anything else anticipated that is needed? Because it sounds like there's been far too much back and forth, and it's un it's just no. We're, sounds we're ridiculous we're to there. me in the first place. Well, it like this shouldn't have happened was, already. Yeah. So, like, what can we do on our side to make? To help this process go smoother, we, and right now all I'm hearing to... is that we're putting it back on on Spark, and like they need, they just asked us for help. So, can can you talk to Public Works and say this is what's coming? Public I mean, Works is, is there waiting. Anything else we're They're waiting. To do? We're waiting. That's all. We're waiting. They're ready for it. So I think I think we're clear, uh, Carlos. We've been having a conversation for a while now, so we know you already summarized what we need to do in order to move forward. So I'm glad that you guys had a chance to come this evening in order to explain, you know, like what some of the causes for the delays have been. I think we're clear now and we're looking forward within the next 30 days to having this installed. So once we have the permit, then it, we, we still have to schedule the... the so we're, are we getting a commitment that um, within 30 days, all of the permits will be secured? Oh, yeah, that's what by, by you. That's, yeah. And then we can schedule our. our that's, that's, up there. that's exactly what I've been waiting for. We're trying to help okay. you by doing all of the, the permitting. OK, have, so we will hold you to that. <laughs> well, that's okay. what I've been waiting for. So I, we're, we'll we're be, we'll redundant be sure now. I'll get I that think we're clear. I think we're good. You know, I just would like to say how sorry, you know, I am, you know, and to extend our apologies for having so much confusion around trying to get this project done. So, and Winifred is very uh, competent and she's very good at, she knows the people, she knows what needs to be done. So just work Wonderful. with her and get her the stuff that she needs and then she can do her job and then you guys can get this done. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your help to yeah. everybody. Yeah. 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 We survived the pandemic, all of us. So, I mean, really, yes. Thank yes. God. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you right. very Have much. Have a good night. We'll talk and, the, and the work is beautiful. So, thank yeah. you so much. Oh, thank, you. Look good. Mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank all you. All right. All right, guys. Sorry right. To, to take you away from your busy evenings, but I'm glad. I think you appreciate the reason why we need to actually see you and hear from you as well. So we're happy that we'll be able to move forward and get this finished within yes. this time Thank next you. month. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. All All right. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So wow. thank you guys. And can you it, tell me from your side, Winifred, what happened? Because like this whole the fact that they haven't been paid for three years and submitted multiple times. Well, that's the first time I've heard that. We've, we've, you know, let them know that they could submit a 
an invoice some time ago and there's a just they don't i think uh i'm not quite sure all i know is that for like they mentioned the COVID is uh has impacted their uh organization and they're not on campus all the time and one guy is in school and you know so it, it's a combination but it sounds like we dropped the ball on our side it's not there i mean at least we from can't what, do like, anything. and i don't know what I don't, i've never heard anything about not being paid before i got here so if they've been working on this project for all those years ahead of time then i wish i knew and i didn't so we're we're making it right right but yeah that's all we can do all i could do I, we but do i can't go any faster until i get documents and I, right. that i've been asking right. for for over 30 days right so Anyway, I think we're yeah. we're moving forward. So yeah. sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, mm, but very sad. Um, okay, yeah. so do you have some updates for us? Uh, item number eight, information uh, items, well, project updates, uh, other than what you've given us so far. Yeah, let me um, share the uh, Caltrans project. Okay, um, that is. Uh, let me get my right agenda right in front of me too. Here. Yeah, the Caltrans beautification project. This is a grant from the state of California, well, from Caltrans. Uh, all throughout the state, they uh, received, I guess, a, some surplus from grants that they solicited for like over 10 years ago. And the city of Richmond was on the list of, of cities that applied over 10 years ago and never received any funds. So there's um, about $4 million that is earmarked for Richmond a beautification project for the underpass for underpasses in in Richmond. So this wow. this has come a project that's come out of the community services di di division department, and so we're splitting money uh, with um, for, for art for underpasses, which essentially is murals. We don't have a whole lot of choices of the medium, mm -hmm. uh, but we're splitting it with landscaping and fencing and lighting and you know some other uh, type projects that are also part of this four million dollar uh, pool of money and there's about 1.3 million dollars that's going to go towards these murals wow and, and all of the things that are part of these murals like the encroachment mm -hmm. <laughs> this whole encroachment permit thing is a really important part of it and we're trying to get it waived from the state because it's their property. It seems like if they shouldn't be charging us to, it's their money too, I guess you'd say, but you know, it could cost, uh, uh, they have an hourly rate for four months worth of service and uh, we have to work on the details. So the bottom line is that there are three locations. The first location is uh, uh, the, um, across from the John two John Worley tag murals, actually, there's blank walls. So those are two of the four locations. And the third one is on Barrett um, between um, McDonald and uh, San Pablo. No, that's per, per, it's off of San Pablo. Mm -hmm. So the what we're going to also do is fold in the, the money for John Worley's tag murals into this pool of money mm -hmm. because it's Caltrans underpass, and they said that it's okay to spend their money on the maintenance, basically, mm -hmm. instead of us taking the uh, almost forty thousand dollars out of our public art uh, pool of money, we can leave that there and then take the funds from this money in order to have John and his team uh, do the restoration on those tag murals. So this has all just happened within the. Um, in terms of the approval to move forward within the last two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. This is something that we started the planning for over six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to basically do the proposals and then they had to do whatever they had to do at the state and come back to us and say that the money is ready. And it's like I said, everything is a process. Mm -hmm. So the money needs to be spent basically in about 18 months. Mm -hmm. And it starts in a, uh, the fiscal year, um, next fiscal year. So it starts July 1st. Mm -hmm. So one of the first projects is going to be the restoration mural while we also uh, work on the other parts of the project. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I know that we don't have a, a large group of folks in our team to do this, but um, because of the source of funds, uh, if we don't have enough people to have formal meetings the same way we normally have done, then we're going to still have this project move forward um, one way or another. So it might be other people from the community become the panelists or we don't know, but that's something that in June we need to have a conversation about and I'll have more information by that time as well. Okay. But uh, part of it is possibly having what they call invitation only artists instead of having a big pool of, you know, a whole bunch of mirrorless and, you know, we have a pool of smaller pool right here of people who can do the, you know, the, the new mural projects. Another special part of this is that you guys are familiar with John Worley's work mm -hmm. and the historical nature of his work. You can't just put random pieces on the other side of the, mm -hmm. right across from it. So the artists are going to have to have some historical connection or have their artwork have a historical connection to the existing mural in order to make it, you know, have some, some kind of continuity. Right. So some of the artists who John Worley has um, asked to have uh, work on his tag murals will be the first artists that we are going to um, invite in this special invitation only group of artists because many of them worked on the mural with John 20 years ago. <laughs> and, um, you know, it just seems like it makes sense to keep it, uh, we're not trying to make this a cumbersome kind of a, a situation. Like I said, we don't have enough people in order for it to be a big thing. And we and, don't have a lot of time either. Well, and the, the, the state is okay with having an invitation only. Mm -hmm. We've had a conversation of, of this proposal of how, you know, it might work and they just say, get it done. <laughs> So, you know, we'll I'm, get it there. We'll, money. I'm wondering money. like what, who else will be invited besides just, just the. Well, we can have that conversation in, in, in June. You know, you can tell me how you want to have this look because we will have money to solicit, but we have to have a scope of services that makes it clear what exactly we're looking for. So we have like 10 artists right now that w could do this work easily. We also have the city of San Jose and other cities in the area who have recently done registries of mirrorless only from the Nine Bay Area counties. So we'll use their lists. Uh, they'll they'll be. It's not just. A, I think I, I, the restoration is one thing. Like it yeah. totally makes sense to keep the same people who did that. Like yeah, for sure. But I'm for the new murals and it. Honestly, what has taken so much time in the past is pulling together these uh, documents and this uh, scope of services and these proposals seem to go back and forth for months at a time. And it's yeah. not necessarily, in, so that's stuff that's not, uh, that honestly you could be working on now and we can approve very quickly, but I think that's if you're if if we want to actually move forward forward fast, it's going to mean that you're um, not depending on us to create these documents or review them multiple times and then having it sent back and forth many times. Like we just need to have a a, a um, an invitation. I guess I, I don't know if it's, if it's an RFP or or whatever, but like that needs to go out and that needs to come from you, I think pretty quickly. Okay, that's I what's explain. always been happening. That's what's the holdup that's happened before is always has to go back to the city, goes back and forth. Well, we're definitely gonna figure out a way to streamline this process, no doubt. But right now, actually, we have to stop our meeting because Tom had to leave and that was our quorum. Okay. So, okay. But this is a, a good place to uh, kind of stop because you've got your juices flowing here about you know how how does this thing look mm -hmm. because if we didn't have um you know anyone i you're right i would be doing be, it yourself yeah and you know i'm used to doing projects so i don't have a problem with that but i would prefer to have um you know a, a team effort here and um but on that note i have to stop talking okay we'll, so, we'll be the best team we can be <laughs> 
I think so. Yeah. So it's, it's eight thirty nine. We have to yes. adjourn our meeting. Do yes. No. No quorum. Yes. Okay. Well, we got a lot accomplished today. Good yeah. meeting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. Good night. Thank you. Talk to you, Kino. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night.